So at this point, it's not a long shot that the long shot is gonna give you long shots, but it's got a few shortcomings, namely the plunger tube, which a lot of aftermarket sellers have started compensating for in the form of some aftermarket metal. The one thing that it really needs is it needs an overall ergonomic overhaul. And while one thing is peaking around right now, this is actually just a shell because this in-flight catering bag has a lot of the good stuff inside. So you can see here that we have developed a new grip, a stock block, a top rail, a super upgrade to the mag release, as well as the old safety delete. So let's go ahead and crack this thing open and show you what all of the parts do when installed. Let's go. All right, so cracking open our long shot, no matter how many times I say that, it still feels like I hopped into a time machine. I realized that not unlike the long shot of yore, I've missed one critical screw hole in here, preventing me from getting inside. And you'll be able to see some of the things that we've already done and uh, some of the things we've yet to do. Inside the stock, you see where we've got the modularity of it. And that pops off like that. Grip comes off like so. This is an interesting piece that maybe we'll replace in the future, but not in our present setup. Note that there are three screws hidden behind the stock. All right, that comes up and off, and you can see that we are empty inside. We've already done a little bit of lube work in here, as well as kind of some groundwork. So a few of the things that we've already taken out, this is the reprime lock. We've taken this out specifically because we are giving this thing a riser, giving it a little more height, especially given it's a bullpup, and this would no longer be accessible. Also, it's kind of like a bad Lock tends to gum up the works. This is an awkwardly positioned magazine release, particularly because X-Shot decided that they were gonna do a multi-mag well, which means that the real mag release you want is this one, and you don't wanna be hitting it on your way there. So what we're replacing it with is a micro mag release. This is our first two size version. Of course, we'll be replacing it in this install with our black production version. It's still accessible if you wanna drop the mag converter here or the adapter. However, it's not so prevalent that it's gonna get in the way and you'll always hit the mag release first to like actually drop your magazine. As far as the mag release goes, of course that is accessible either from the back with the adapter or through this piece here. Now the original version didn't come out far enough. There wasn't a lot of meat on it and it just felt kind of flimsy. So we've buffed it up and connected it to the original adapter punch here. We've used brass hardware inside to mate it to these much heavier duty nubbins and we've run metal through both sides of the blaster to access them. It makes the reinstall a little bit tricky, but it's a tactile feeling that's definitely worth the trouble. Now, this is the Delete. Once again, this is our last version that was sized perfectly. We're gonna replace that with this one. The only notable thing for those of you installing this kit using this video is that if you look at these, one side of our kit has a nub on it, like a cutout. That cutout is gonna go into the blaster up against this piece here, so that's the alignment of that part. With that said, the other aesthetic parts here are we have a kind of stock block heading up the true long shot legacy, and this is just going to permanently set our stock out in its most extended position. It really is a nice aesthetic choice, as well as uh, you know adding that security when you're priming in, particularly with heavier spring loads. Now, other than that, we've added a new grip. This is more of a shotgun style grip. It mates over the original pick rail, especially since the Zuru plastic is kind of cheap. Something we've noticed here is that this is a little chewy and we want to make sure that we have plenty of grip over it. So rather than mate around the pick rail or try and get into it and adapt that way, we just rather encapsulate it as we've done with blasters in the past. So with all of that said, we're going to install the black hardware. Again, these kits are going to come pre-installed with the brass heat set insert, and then you're also going to get the metric hardware that sets in. You can see how those, once the shell is ready, those are gonna mate together like that, just making a really solid piece for your mag release setup here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get the black conversion into here, and then I'm gonna start assembling the blaster so that you can take a look at what it looks like all assembled. All right, so as we're reassembling this, you can see we've got our uh, brass inserts here. This is here in functional. Everything is coming back together. This is already set to the ideal position, but I just think that this is hilarious. I kept trying to put the screws in. Uh, the, uh, the long one goes in the bottom. The top one goes here, and I was like, what are these things for? They're like the world's worst takedown pins. They lock into the front, but they also are the screw posts for the front two screws here. So when you ask yourself questions like, wow, only $30, how did X-Shot do that? The answer is, really janky cost-saving stuff like this. Note, this isn't a feature. 
necessarily because these aren't real takedown pins because they're not toolless in any capacity. You'd have to unscrew the front thing to drop the pins out anyway. A little bit of dexterity required there. Now I like to do our mag release pins last just because they set the blaster kind of off. This is a push fit like so. This goes on top like so. And then our hardware locks it in like so. We've got an Allen key here. Let's twist those into place. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set this into place like so. Put this on top. The heat set inserts will do a lot of the work here. This is, again, just something that we're proud of here at Foam Pro Shop is how much hardware we use on our parts. In addition to our print quality, the use of heat set inserts and plenty of hardware really adds to the uh, structural rigidity and long-term viability of our components. All right, once you're locked in and you have this and this installed, you can go ahead, start tucking in your mag release pins. Of note, if you are you know, of a single handedness, this sits flush against the other side, so if you're only ever planning on using your thumb, you could just not install the part. We're gonna give you the part anyway, but if you don't plan on using this as an ambi release, I actually prefer running mine halfway. That said, we're not gonna ask you and check out whether you're left-handed or right-handed, so you'll get both, install both if you want to, or uh, don't. One of my favorite things about our kit is the rail riser. I think we have the most handsome one because we actually followed the lines and design of the blaster as opposed to just kind of slamming a 45 on there in Tinkercad and calling it a day. This is really slick just because the friction fit is sharp, but also we have two pieces of hardware to lock in to keep it in place kind of permanently. The riser is just the right height so that when you have this thing up against your cheek, kind of dialing it in, any optics you put up top are gonna to be level with your line of sight. It's a very sharp feature, kind of transforms the whole thing, makes it look a little more industrial. Let's take it outside and put a few downrange. All right, guys, so we're out here in the humidity, the perfect way to break in your dueling pants. Leather pants and flip-flops, not a common combo, but not impossible to pull off. Now that I've wasted all of my confidence points on that, let me tell you, we are pretty stoked with how the kit looks aesthetically. We really like the line work along it. I think that this looks like pretty, pretty clean, a pretty flawless mesh through the just the, the overall industrial design of the blaster. This is a little different, but uh, if you like grips like this, ours is terrific. It's also incredibly sturdy, which I'm a big fan of. As you can see, the low profile nature of this means that you can still grab it, but it must be intentional. And of course, it's still got good hold there as well. As far as the blaster's performance goes, we thought about throwing a, uh, a K25 in, but frankly, I think that for what we intend to use the blaster for, it is doing fine. There are definitely ways to increase the power of the blaster and add extra barrel length. This kind of funky setup here, there are a lot of uh, Thingiverse options for adding collars to increase the barrel length. Beyond that, you know, just an overall aesthetic change for the blaster, like I said, this pad here lets you drop the magazine very comfortably, very easily. I, again, I don't put the one on my offhand just because it makes it easier for me to brush up along that. So in some ways it's a delete, but a very modular kit, lots of options there. Overall, just uh, pretty happy with how it turned out. I think it has a very industrial look to it with the additional kit. And of course you can imagine that with the blaster shouldered and your cheek rest here, this optic is a far more in line, far more reasonable idea than trying to be down here for whatever reason. I just don't think, I don't think that that works quite the same, but uh, I, Think that this video should go live and the kit will be available in our usual places. Foamproshop.com is where you want to buy the kit. It is available on Etsy with the dummy tax, but don't be a dummy. Like you saw the kit here, buy it directly. Why would we ever support a company like Etsy when we have anything to, to say about it? But it's available in a litany of colors. We have a red that is color matched to the blaster in its standard paint job. We have the black, which we're a big fan of. And I think we're also offering this in our uh, Beskar gray as well, but the kit is available over on foamproshop.com, an incredibly reasonably priced kit, especially when you consider that the blaster itself is so inexpensive to begin with, you can build out something really custom. Next stop for this one is, uh, it's gotta get a paint job. I gotta paint it up in some sort of just absolutely gnarly way. Really excited to take advantage of this and kind of de-sticker bomb it. As much as this is very popular, the direct to printing on the blasters, I think that uh, the, the line work of the blaster itself lends itself uh, nicely to a much cleaner paint job. Overall, the Zuru Longshot is a home run. I think that our kit really improves it in a lot of ways. And, uh, and I'd love for you to check it out as well. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think of the kit? Are you gonna pick one up? And then uh, more importantly, if you do pick one up and do your own mod, 
Send us a picture of it. I'd love to add that to my uh, my Instagram or the feed. Speaking of which, if you're not following me on Instagram already, might not be a bad idea. The leather pants are for Gen Con. We have a lot of uh, professional obligations over at Gen Con, and uh, we might even be slinging some cardboard while we're over there. But uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys uh, next time. Don't forget to check out the kit on foamproshop.com. Much love. Blast on, Drac out. Oh,